In this video, I'm going to discuss how the electron transport chain can harness energy from NADH and FADH2 to form ATP. In several previous videos, I've gone through the steps of oxidative metabolism, including how acetyl-CoA is formed from glucose and fatty acids, how that acetyl-CoA is oxidized to form coenzymes NADH and FADH2, and finally, we're going to talk about how these coenzymes can be oxidized in the electron transport chain to harness the energy to form ATP. Let's start with a brief review of the stages of carbohydrate metabolism. In the first few videos, I showed you how glucose can be formed into two molecules of pyruvate in a series of reactions that we call glycolysis. That pyruvate can then move into the mitochondria and be formed into acetyl-CoA. Finally, I went through how acetyl-CoA can enter the Krebs cycle to be oxidized. In each step of these pathways, the coenzyme NADH or FAD becomes reduced so that electrons are transferred from the chemical bonds of glucose pyruvate or acetyl-CoA and their associated hydrogens are moved on to NAD or FADH2. All of these reduced coenzymes can move into the mitochondria, specifically into the electron transport chain. So what I've shown you here is a series of proteins found on the inner mitochondrial membrane, and we call this the electron transport chain. Here I've got a diagram of the membranes of the mitochondria. So remember, mitochondria is a double-layered membrane. We've got our outer mitochondrial membrane and our inner mitochondrial membrane. The space between the two membranes is called our intermembrane space, and the inside of the mitochondria is called the mitochondrial matrix. So what the electron transport chain is, is a series of protein complexes found on the inner mitochondrial membrane. So instead of just these lines, I've depicted the phospholipids now as phospholipids. Okay, so here's our inner mitochondrial membrane with some proteins embedded within it, and we call these proteins the electron transport chain. I've gotten rid of the whole mitochondrial drawing, and we're just going to talk specifically about the electron transport chain. As you can recall, the reduced form of the coenzyme NADH and FADH2 have electrons associated with them. Those electrons are going to be transferred through the complexes. Electrons from NADH are going to be transferred at complex 1. Electrons from FADH2 are going to be transferred at complex 2. So just to show you what I'm talking about. Electrons move through the electron transport chain NADH donates at complex 1, and FADH2 at complex 2. Movement of electrons generates energy. Before we talk about that energy being generated by those electrons, let's talk about where they end up. As electrons move through the electron transport chain, they are eventually delivered to oxygen, and oxygen with those electrons combined with hydrogen to form water. This is why we call oxidative metabolism, oxidative metabolism. This is where the oxygen is needed. Without oxygen, electrons cannot move through the electron transport chain. They need an eventual donor. So aerobic metabolism, oxidative phosphorylation, this is where the oxygen is needed in the matrix of the mitochondria to accept electrons. As I said earlier, electrons moving through the complexes of the electron transport chain generates energy. This energy is used to pump hydrogens into the intermembrane space. Remember, the space between the two membranes is called the intermembrane space. Here I'm going to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So electrons moving through the electron transport chain generates energy to move hydrogens against its electrochemical gradient, so up its electrochemical gradient, to the intermembrane space. Here I've put our membranes back in again, so here we've got our outer mitochondrial membrane, our inner mitochondrial membrane, and here we've got our electrochemical gradient. We have a much higher concentration of hydrogen in the intermembrane space than in the matrix. 
So this is a lot of potential energy. Normally, this phospholipid bilayer is completely impermeable to hydrogen, so it can't leak through here. Okay, so it's stuck. It needs a pathway to move down its gradient. And what's moved it up is the movement of electrons through the complexes. Now what's going to happen is that when hydrogen moves down its gradient through this enzyme called ATP synthase, remember any enzyme is ASE, so hydrogens will be allowed to pass through this enzyme ATP synthase. That movement of hydrogens generates energy and that energy is harnessed by this enzyme to form ATP. So let's have a look at how this works. So here's the hydrogens moving down its concentration gradient and that energy is harnessed into this bond between inorganic phosphate and ADP. So now we've got adenosine triphosphate. Okay, This happens over and over again. The more NADH and FADH2, the more hydrogens are pumped, the more hydrogens are pumped, the greater the concentration and gradient and the more ATP can be produced from hydrogens moving down its concentration gradient. So let's go through a quick summary of the electron transport chain. It takes place in the mitochondria. It needs oxygen because it's the final acceptor of electrons through the complexes. NADH and FADH are oxidized. That means they give up their electrons and associated hydrogens to be reformed to NAD and FAD. And the energy from the electron movements through the complexes cause hydrogens to move up their electrochemical gradient. And then that gradient, that energy from the movement of hydrogens down the gradient through ATP synthase can be harnessed to form a large amount of ATP. So let's summarize every step we've gone through. We first talked about the formation of acetyl-CoA. So that can be either formed from glucose or from fatty acids. That acetyl-CoA can then be oxidized, and then all the coenzymes formed in glycolysis, from the oxidation of pyruvate, from beta-oxidation, from Krebs cycle, all goes to the electron transport chain. All of those coenzymes are then oxidized, so they donate their electrons, those electrons move for the electron transport chain, generating an energy gradient, and that energy gradient is harnessed to form ATP. As a quick summary, we've talked about three ways in which ATP can be regenerated. One is a one-step reaction, the phosphagen system. Another, 10 steps, anaerobic glycolysis. And the final is a lot of steps, but it can produce a whole ton of ATP.